I'm about to share with you a secret strategy that you can start using right now to stand out from competitors and completely destroy them. Now, this strategy is dependent on the type of campaign you run, but we're going to start by talking about shopping as this is the most common placement and one of the easiest to beat your competitors. Now, before we actually dive into the actual strategy for the shopping ads side of things, let's first take a step back and understand how shopping ads even work when it comes to choosing one brand over uh -huh. another to rank within the top five or top 10. This is one of the most common questions I often get when I'm auditing brands under my Google Ads agency or marketing because so many e-commerce brands Brand owners, even those doing a million dollars a month and more with their brand, think that it's just about spending the most money on Google Shopping, or it's just about bidding the highest. And this could not be further away from the truth. Now, the main things Google has started to look at more is what kind of brand do you run? What kind of ad are you running? What is your product feed quality? Are you just putting things up and hoping that somebody clicks on your ad, or are you actually putting in an effort with everything you are doing? And most important of all, what kind of a business are you? You're running are you running a high quality business that serves good quality products or do you just have a bunch of products there which you don't even care if the customer gets on type these are all things would determine something called the quality score of your ad account as a whole and with this quality score is between one to ten so the higher the quality score is the more you're going to be ranking in the front while bidding less while spending less amount of money compared to your competitors but that kind of is a general gist of how google shopping even looks at your ads nowadays this brings me to the next one which is how do you actually stand out from competitors especially in situations like this where there's just so many different competitors coming up so many different styles of products colors textures designs etc and especially when you have competitors which are basically kind of looking the same like each other how do you actually stand out from the rest now of course we're going to start with the product image here because that's one of the first things and that's what's at the top when a user sees your ad now there's various different ways to stand out when it comes to the product images and just standing out from competitors in general i always say this you want to do the opposite of competitors but that's a little bit of a broad statement what do i exactly mean well in a situation like this opposite of your competitors is basically understanding what kind of product image strategy your competitors are doing is it mostly white background product images like these ones right here or is it more lifestyle images like these you want to first of all answer that question to get a really good idea of what your competitors are doing because in a situation like this doing the opposite of your competitor is as simple as having a lifestyle image if everybody else is a white background image and vice versa it's as simple as that but in certain situations you might not be able to do that because there's like a 50 50 distinction between those doing lifestyle images versus those doing white product images so in situations like those you have to be a little bit more strategic you have to focus on the nitty-gritty details in some cases to stand out from competitors or even looking at things such as which way is the product facing is it from left to right or is it from right to left we're also looking at things such as is the product tilted or should it be more like just looking at the camera like this one right here or should it have some sort of an angle to it this first brand right here did it perfectly because they noticed everybody else has a pretty much a plain white background image and then the lifestyle images well there's nobody sitting in the seat itself so instead of just doing another lifestyle image like this one right here what they decided to do is this decide to have a lady in there who looks like she's relaxing on that product she's feeling relieved she's feeling stress-free all these things you can kind of feel it from this product image and that's the main goal you want to showcase people using the product or wearing the product that's one great way to stand out from competitors and do something unique but only if nobody else is doing that as well now one of the easiest another common ways to stand out from competitors if you don't have let's say lifestyle images or you don't have the ability to get product images that are custom is to basically just put like a little color behind the product image itself so the background instead of being fully lifestyle maybe it's just a little bit of a shade of gray or maybe it's a shade of blue very light blue very light gray all these things are enough to make your product be distinguished from the rest because if the rest are just plain white background images or even if the rest are just lifestyle images like these well now your silverish background image is going to definitely stand out from the competitors you want to then start focusing on the product titles now 
I speak with a lot of brands regularly under my agency, which by the way, if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year, you need extra help scaling to the next level with Google ads. Go onto my website at yourmarketing.com and schedule a free call with me to see essentially how we can work together and make that happen. But I regularly see brands talking about how their product title needs to be the biggest one out of everybody or needs to have these big words, these big search engine optimized keywords and every single keyword needs to basically have some sort of SEO touch to it. And this is not true at all. All this will do is make it look like a bunch of junk put together and it's not really professional. And I always say this, your title strategy should be based on two things. Number one, search engine optimization. Number two, perceived value, because keep in mind, it's not just the algorithm that's reading the product titles, it's also a real human being sitting behind a computer screen also reading your product title. So if you have just a bunch of junk put together with a bunch of commas and whatnot, it's not really appealing to any user and it definitely doesn't make them impressed to wanna to purchase the product from you. So instead, ensure to also look at what your competitors are doing. If a bunch of these competitors have product titles which are massive already, you don't wanna be just another brand with a massive product title. Instead, you want to be a brand with a shorter product title because as you see right here, immediately it captures your attention. And when you're looking at all the product titles, this is what captures your attention because this has a little bit of white space here where everything else here, it's all looking the same. It's all a bunch of junk put together. And this is an easy way to stand out from competitors. Just do the opposite of what your competitors are doing. One key thing you wanna also potentially do is for research for your keywords when it comes to product titles. One of the best ways to find SEO keywords is to directly go on Amazon. And then from there, basically start doing a bit of research because what you will understand is when you go on Amazon, for example, like here, we just find a random wooden massage chair. Like for example, this one, it's not the same, but let's assume it is. We can see there's so many different SEO keywords here. There's so many different things you could be adding to your own product titles to make it better. This is key here because you wanna be using these keywords and these titles to your advantage to make yours better because a lot of these Amazon listings and Amazon sellers, they put a lot of effort into SEO because that's how you rank with Amazon. So that's gonna definitely be a big winning kind of piece for you. But again, as long as you do opposite of competitors. Now, third thing is pricing. To stand out from competitors, you have to stay away from the basic, basic pricing. I mean, if you look right here, majority of these prices are 99 at the very end. It's $1,999.99, 2,899. 2999 so on and so forth. Imagine if you come in with a product that you're selling and instead of just doing 289.99 or 299.99, you maybe do something like $4,370 or something like this brand did right here, $8,178. It's unique, it's different and it's enough to make you stop in your tracks and just think twice about what you just read. Now, does this mean you're always going to get the sale? Absolutely not but at least it's gonna help a user potentially stop in their track to really understand your brand a bit further because this makes them curious. It makes them want to know why your pricing is so different. Like for example, this one, $510.65. It's a very unique pricing. It's out of the blue. It kind of stops you in your tracks because you're not expecting it. And that's the main goal with Google Shopping. You want to make it completely different and you want to make a user stop in their tracks. In addition, for the pricing, you could be having promos like this one to where a, for basically a little small box comes on the top left where it says X dollars off or percentage off. You could also have promos going on where it makes your pricing the color green. If you have a, some kind of sale price going on, these are all things again, which help your brand stand out from the competitors, which is the ultimate goal. Now that's that for pricing. Finally, this brings us to the Google Merchant Center programs and promos. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. You want to basically have whatever program or promo which your competitors don't have. So for example, majority of these competitors right here have reviews. So notice how the first one doesn't even have any reviews, but that doesn't matter because it's enough to really capture your attention with what they've done already prior to us even looking at the review section. Now they do have a promo code here, which not a lot of these other brands do. This one just has a special offer. So they did something unique. This is the main goal with the Google Merchant Center. It's not to just go in and add a bunch of things. It's rather to do again, the opposite of competitors, whatever they don't have, you need to add. But that's pretty much it for the shopping side of things. Now, talking about search campaigns, you need to be focused on, first of all, the size itself. How big is your search campaign? I know this is not a search campaign, but let's assume it is. How big is your search campaign versus your competitors? Because sizing again matters. It's just like looking at the different kinds of product images and product titles. If a big, if somebody has a big product title, if a majority of your competitors have big product titles, then you need to make yours smaller. Same thing here. If majority of the search ad campaigns are big kind of ad copies and a lot of junk going on, you need to make your 
are small and vice versa. That's the easiest way to stand out. But in addition to that, you need to also be focused on the ad copy itself. You need to understand how your competitors are laying out their ad copies. Is it something very simple and very boring like this? Or is it very eloquent and it has a lot of words in it and a lot of imagery? So from there, you will know exactly what kind of works to have within your own search campaigns. Be sure again to add perceived value to your ad copies as well as search engine optimized keywords. Those two things are very important for the ad copies. And then finally, the extras you would do within the back end, such as having any types of store ratings and any other sorts of extensions you might have. Those are all things which can potentially help boost the overall kind of size of your ad and also make it more desirable and make it more clickable because that's ultimately the main goal is to get that click from that ad itself. But again, if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year, you need extra help scaling your brand to the next level. Go onto my website at yourmarketing.com and schedule a free call with me to see essentially how we can work together and make that happen. But check out this video right here on a new Google Ads retargeting strategy we're using, along with standing out from competitors using an approach like the one I just covered to really take brands to multi seven figures and beyond.